I just wanted to say, where, I wanted to echo the comment that was made on the other panel, there does have to be a people's movement. Our local work will feed the national work. Good afternoon. I am Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, and I am here representing Winifred Hess, our president of the Black Women's Agenda Incorporated. The Black Women's Agenda was founded in 1977 by 10 very courageous women who decided that they were going to put forward a Black Women's Action Plan at the International Women's Conference. These 10 women formed the Black Women's Agenda and felt that it was their job, Black women's job, to advance, secure, and protect the rights of Black women and their families. They do this through three tenets, education, health, and economic development. We have 19 national collaborating organizations with whom we work and with whom we work through, many of which are seen on this panel. Our efforts include working directly with congressional uh, members, directly with our national organizations to address issues like the fiscal cliff, economic pay equality, health dif differentials, and other things that are of interest, economics, development. We work very hard to ensure that we are representing the rights of women who cannot speak for themselves. This in turn does impact their families, and we invite you to work with us, work through your organizations to help us continue to fight this hard fight. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tamara Turley Robinson, and I'm very pleased to be here with you this afternoon. I am national president of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, a national nonprofit organization. And since 1938, we have been an organization of mothers who work hard, work hard, to positively and effectively raise healthy and whole African American children in our society, this society that does not always appropriately recognize their value. Currently, we have 231 chapters, 10,000 members. We're in 35 states and the District of Columbia. We currently partner very strongly with Marion Wright Edelman and the Children's Defense Fund. We're currently working to make sure the Strong Star for Children's Act passes. We, on the local level, we focus on gun control and stand your ground laws in each of the states where we're represented. I'm very happy to be here to discuss some very, very important issues this afternoon. Well, first, I should say, forgive me, I was sitting in the audience enjoying the panel, uh, not believing that all of us could be up here at the same time. And then I discovered my name over here. And I said, oh, God, I have a seat. Well, thank you for inviting me. And I just want to say, hearing Michelle Ebanks, the president of Essence, say that this is the 44th year of Essence, tells you all how weary Mama must be. Because I was there starting in year one. And after the stand up, I said to the team, we just can't go back and have a party in New Orleans. We have to have a party with a deeper purpose. What could we ask our people to do? The tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands who come from all over the nation and world to have a good old time. And it didn't take long to understand that we just needed to ask us to get engaged in the lives of our young ones who are losing ground. And that gave birth to Essence Cares which grew into the National Cares Mentoring Movement, which is now in 58 states across the country. And basically, we do two things. What we're asking is that you become a mentor, that you give one hour a week of your time to nurture, nourish, advance a child. And what we do is we recruit African-American mentors. We focus on black folks, because when the call goes out for mentors, white women are the first respondents. And then white men, then black women and black men. And I don't have to tell you that the need is in reverse order, most critical among our young males. And what we're doing now is building high-level transformational programs for the healing, the consciousness changing of our young, so that we will fortify them, help them to know that they are geniuses and brilliant, and, and that they can move their lives forward. I left Essence when I learned that 80% of black fourth graders were reading below grade level. Today, that number is 86%. We have work to do. Well, thank you, ladies. Even in your introduction, you really lifted up some of the issues that we uh, need to talk about. Uh, I want to start with Michelle. First, thank you, Essence, for partnering with National Action Network on this panel because we are discussing some very important topics, and Essence served as a co-sponsor. 
for you and, and Essence Magazine, how are you communicating with women about the issues, and what are you hearing, what feedback are you hearing from them? Um, well, I just wanted to, one, just, I mean, yeah, Susan, I'm so humbled to be, you know, here on this panel, and yes, Susan, 44 years, and you mentioned the Essence Festival, this will be the 20th anniversary. And indeed, I tell the story over and over again because the Essence Festival is now the largest live event in the country. Of any, you know, 543,000 people attended last year. And when people ask, why is it the biggest? One, they're surprised. You hear about South by Southwest and other events. The festival is seven times bigger than South by Southwest. And when people ask them why, I tell Susan exactly that story. When the festival was conceived as a one-time celebration of the 25th anniversary, and Susan L. Taylor said, we're Essence, we can't just have a party. We have to have content and experiences that are accessible by everyone. And they have to be free. And we have to talk about those issues of empowerment. And that idea that you know, black women are community builders by our very nature, by necessity, and the idea of community, of everyday women coming together in a forum to share, to laugh, to cry, um, to feel at home, and to be empowered, to leave refreshed and rejuvenated. And in essence, you know, we seek to continue to be that home um, as, our, as our women are more social, uh, uh, more economically mobile, moving to communities, moving away from those communities that have nurtured and sustained us. So Essence is that place where you will see the truth, the truth that will say, yes, you are powerful, yes, you are beautiful, yes, you are visible, and yes, you can be fearless. And that's the role that the brand has played and will continue to play um, because we have to know the truth, and it's the truth that will empower us to change the lie that is out there in the world. So someone mentioned in their opening statement, and I think it was Dr. Fay, you mentioned these images that we see, and, you, and the image of Sojourner Truth being in, in the Capitol. Can we talk a little bit about the images that we see and how they impact our young women as we begin to prepare them for womanhood and how that impacts what their future might look like. And then I'll share an interesting uh, story with you. Yeah. Susan mentioned the 58 states. We're still out there looking for those. <laughs> so, so that we could go and get some members there to help us with it. But, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I know she did in mid cities. But anyway, um, we um, think that it's very important for our young women to have um, people that they can look up to. And Susan's organization is one of those that's doing that. And we try to do the same thing in mentoring. We mentor so many young women. Uh, they're in our office. We never say no to anyone who wants to be uh, with us for the summer. I even had, had young women who wanted to come over Christmas vacation. I gave up my vacation so that I could give them the opportunity to work. So I think each of us may, maybe can't do everything, but we can certainly take a young woman. We can mentor a young woman, and we can uh, show her what we're doing every day, show her how to do it. We have a program where we start with uh, Little Ones College for Kids. This is a signature program from when uh, Shirley Chisholm, my uh, predecessor, and Dr. C. Dolores Tucker, Tucker, my other one was. Uh, we, we take those children on a Saturday, every Saturday. We have programs going on all across the country where we bring them in, we teach them all the wonderful things they can be because we know how important images are. We bring in bankers, doctors, lawyers, diplomats, all kinds of voc voc people and vocations or professions that some of these young children have never heard of, but they get to know them. And when they came in, maybe they all wanted to be dancers, singers, and football players, but they get to see someone else every Saturday. And as, as I said, we do this all across the country. We don't stop. When we take them from the eight years old up to 13 years old, we then have a program called College for Teens, where we have them live in on college campuses so they can get accustomed to knowing that this is a place that's not threatening. This is some place you want to go. We graduate, even the little 8 to 12, 13 year old ones, in full caps and gown regalia so that they can understand it's not threatening, this is something you want to do. 
And then we take on the young adults. We have young adults in our organization with their own chapters. We give them real things to do, not just filing papers, not just going to get coffee. We allow them to attend meetings, not just with me, but for me. And all of our chapter presidents, our chairs across the country do that same thing. It's a matter of taking them by the hand. Now, we don't always get in the news, so many of you have not maybe heard of us. We were on, I think, uh, MSNBC one time. And on Chris Gregory, uh, uh, Chris Matthews program, but David Gregory filled in for him, so they didn't even, you know, have have Chris Matthews that day. But the point is, while others are being on television, we are doing things. We are an activist, progressive organization, and we reach out to other organizations. We don't just complain that people don't invite us in to work with them. We reach out to them. Uh, we we speak for their national programs, their local programs. We um go and work with Comcast Cares. We invite all kinds of people to come in and do that. We, we know the importance of our working together. Every year I donate to Melanie, whatever election it is, it doesn't matter. I know if Melanie's doing it, it's important. So I send you know our donation to that. So sometimes we can't be there, but we can, as Melanie said earlier, we can give those few dollars for it. There is always something we can do. But 